Hi all, welcome back again to our Tosca playlist. And today we are going to talk about an interesting topic and it's all about API testing. So how do you do API testing in Tosca? Now we have seen a lot of examples about how we scan and automate our web applications or uh, even a PDF uh, document, right? So Tosca can uh, automate any type of application or the, it can scan different types of applications based on the engine, right? So Tosca has got all these different engines through which it can interact with these applications. And similarly, it has got a API engine through which it can interact with different types of APIs, okay? And Tosca is not able to only send and receive requests uh, or even uh, verify your responses for your APIs, but uh, it can also scan your APIs, right? Obviously, uh, that needs some level of documentation for your APIs, basically like a Swagger documentation. If it is present, then you can scan that particular uh, documentation and all your API uh, messages will be created automatically by the API scan. We'll look at an example, but first let's see how you can uh, basically interact with this API scan, okay? So in this API testing uh, tab, when you go to this particular tab, you will find the API scan. And to launch this application, you need to start API scan. So this will basically open a new window. It is like a separate tool in itself, uh, which has got a lot of, lot of different options, okay? And uh, you can uh, send and receive requests uh, and responses. Uh, you can do all types of things uh, which any other API testing tool will provide you, okay? But uh, the most interesting uh, option is scanning. You can scan a particular file or you can scan a particular URI, which is basically uh, the URL for your API, okay? And uh, as you can see, there are different formats uh, which you can scan, but we'll talk about it a little bit later. First, uh, I want to show you that there are two ways of opening this particular window or particular tool, which is the Tosca API scan. So one way uh, which I have already shown you through Tosca commander, but now if I go ahead and close my Tosca commander, there is a second way of launching API scan, even if uh, there is no Tosca commander on your machine, okay? So how you can do that, go to your search bar, and search for API scan. Once you search for the API scan, you can see uh, the API scan application and I can run it independently without Tosca commander. You can see uh, I don't have Tosca commander running in the background, okay? So when I open, uh, you will see the same window opening uh, with all the same features and uh, how you work, everything remains same. But the biggest difference between how you launch API scan from Tosca Commander and how you launch it from your desktop is this particular API scan uh, application, it doesn't require any particular license. Okay, so you can run it independently and freely without requiring a license. But obviously if you uh, want to integrate your API testing with your web application testing and you want to uh, do more uh, with your API tests, then obviously you will require Tosca Commander. But for just checking your APIs, whether uh, your uh, request and response is working um, or some aspects of your APIs are, are working correctly or they have been designed correctly, they have been developed correctly. So that uh, you can basically do with this particular application. And it also provides you with the facility to scan, uh, which we already talked about. So this can be used uh, along with other developers or your uh, API architects or designers, right? And you can sit with them and uh, you can also provide this tool to them. They don't need to install Tosca Commander or they don't need a license. They can just open this uh, API scan and uh, they can play around with their own APIs to basically do some initial testing or to check whether their APIs are ready for testing, okay? The other advantage uh, is, as I said, uh, for doing more with your API testing, you require the Tosca commander. And to do that, 
we need to basically export whatever we have created here uh, into our Tosca commander. Now there are two ways of it. One way if we are opening it right from your desktop, you need to uh, export the API test case uh, and that will be created as a subset which again you need to import back into Tosca commander, right? But if you have opened this from the Tosca commander, uh, then it will be directly integrated, which means the folders will be automatically created for you. You don't need to import anything or export anything. It will be directly uh, taking you to the Tosca commander uh, API testing window, okay? So that's uh, the only major difference uh, apart from the licensing part, but the rest of the functionality, as I said, uh, remains the same, right? Now, uh, let's talk about the basic functionality uh, without looking at the scanning functionality. So the basic functionality of any API testing tool is, uh, it is the ability of that particular tool to send any request and receive any uh, response, right? So you can view that response uh, in right in this tool, and you can also verify how much time it took, uh, what are the response uh, values which you were expecting, if you want to send some header information, if it includes some parameters like path parameters, so uh, everything can be done right from here, okay? So let's see what are the different options and uh, also let's try to send a simple request and then uh, we can see how it works in the API scan, okay? So for this example, uh, I'm going to use this particular API it is just a demo API which basically returns um, a page with all the list of users for this particular GET request. Obviously, there are lots of other requests which you can send, but I'll be using this. You can see uh, this is the request uh, resource or uh, along with the URL, and this is the response. Okay, so uh, it will return me this particular response with all the different user details. Okay. To send any particular request uh, in your API scan, you need to first create a message, right? So first, uh, you can see a default tree structure, which is also present on the left-hand side. This is its own tree structure when uh, I can create any number of messages or folders, okay? So a folder is already created. You can see uh, I can also rename this particular project, okay? and uh, I can create my own messages here. So these are basically the API messages. And uh, once I create this message, uh, maybe I can call it, I can rename it uh, to get request, okay, or get a list of users. And then um, I need to select a method. Now, if you are uh, familiar with API, REST API methods, then these are all the methods which are available in the REST API. And the most uh, useful ones or the most frequently used ones are get, post, put, delete, right? But there are others also if you want to use them. Um, for me, currently it is the get method. I need to provide a endpoint and a resource. These are the two most important information which you need to provide with any API request, okay? And then uh, you can also provide the payload, but for a GET request, you don't require a payload. For That will be required for a POST request, okay? And then as I said, uh, you can also provide parameters, uh, and parameters are of three types here. First is the query parameters, then second is path, and then you can also use header parameter, okay? Also, there are different types of authentication. Uh, the important ones are the basic, uh, you can use OAuth 2.0 or Digest Authentication, uh, NTLM and uh, Kerberos, right? So there are different uh, authentication mechanisms uh, which can be associated with every, every API. So you can use any of this uh, authentication if it applies to your API, okay? You can also send attachments, uh, you can also uh, select a security protocol if it is applicable for your request, okay? So now talking about uh, this sample request which I'm trying to send. So this is the endpoint for this particular API request and uh, I'm going to mention it here. And after this, 
uh, we need to provide a resource right now do keep in mind that for every api request which you look at it will always have this endpoint which is common across all your api requests and then there would be a resource which is basically a unique uh, location on the server where you will be uh, either requesting information or you'll be updating the information so for me uh, the resource is this uh, so whatever is mentioned here this is my resource and this is what i want to do okay i want to get the information from this particular resource so for some reason i'm not able to copy this let's try it one more time okay but okay let me type this in i don't know why I, i'm not able to copy this okay but let's type this in so uh, slash api slash users and page equals two okay so this is uh, my resource um, and if you look at this api page uh, it doesn't have any kind of authentication okay or and also this doesn't require any kind of parameter okay so once i provide an endpoint and a resource i can send this request and how you can run a particular uh, api message request so there is a run option on the top so you can perform any kind of operation on your api messages so when you're sending a request you need to provide the details and then you need to click on run okay once you click on run you will see uh, the tab which was on the request now has changed to response okay because we are looking uh, at the response okay and if you want to go back to your request you can click back on this request if you want to go back to a response uh, you can click it here uh, it will show you a status code now there are different status codes so it will select uh, whatever it is getting from the response it will show you the response time so you can check how much time it took to process this request and then uh, the payload which is the response api response which we received from the server uh, with all the user details okay so this is how uh, you can simply uh, send a request and receive a response in your uh, tosca api scan okay and you can create a message uh, you can create folders folder structure for your api project and uh, you can then create any number of messages and you can check all these messages here okay so this is the basic functionality of tosca api scan in the next video i am going to show you in the next video i am going to show you how you can basically scan different apis right from tosca api scan and how uh, it will automatically create all these messages uh, with all the different values and also a particular structure based on your apis okay so that's all for this video uh, hopefully this was interesting and do tune in into our channel to watch the next uh, video on api testing where we'll be looking at how you can scan different apis and create your uh, api project right uh, on the api scan application 